All right, so tonight we are doing our Design Your Jeep Build class number three. And tonight is actually going to be about upgrading your fenders and bumpers because those kind of go together. So when we're talking about um, aftermarket bumpers and fenders tonight, I want you to remember that this is your build and it is unique to you. So there is not one way or one answer on what to get. You need to make sure that it is your taste and the look that you love. That is the most important thing, ladies. There are so many different brands out there, so many different designs, um, you know, lots of different opinions. Just remember that this is your build. Your Jeep is gonna be unique just like you. And there are so many different options and ways that you can do your build. This really is important that it's something that you really love the look of you um, really are drawn to and it's all about you. So just remember that, especially as we're going through our training tonight, that this is one of those times where you need to make the choice of what you really love for you and so that you can enjoy your build. So do you have to upgrade from your stock fenders and bumpers? You know, the answer is no, you don't have to upgrade. So why should you upgrade your stock fenders and bumpers? So we're going to start with bumpers. Let's dive in with bumpers. If your Jeep is your daily driver and you are not going to be doing, you know, a ton of off-road and trail riding, this is, you know, your daily driver. That's significantly what you're going to be using this for. A stock bumper will be just fine. You don't have to upgrade it for functionality unless you want to. So this is a stock bumper on a JKU that came out know, from the factory. Oops. So if you're going to be driving off-road and going on trails, then you do want to consider a bumper upgrade. And why? Well, you want to be able to run a winch so that you're gonna need to get a winch bumper that you can mount a winch to. Most of the aftermarket bumpers that they make uh, have specific holes already for you to be able to just mount your winch uh, to that bumper. And they've come out with some really neat recessed winch bumpers where the winch actually will sit down in the bumper as well. And you also want to have upgraded strength and support to be able to mount and use your D-rings or soft shackles on the bumper for recovery. So as you can see, this is an aftermarket moto built bumper um, on my YJ. And you can see the D-rings and the way that they're mounted on this aftermarket bumper so that you're gonna have more strength um, if you need to use those D-rings for uh, recovery on this bumper. And then you also want to do an upgrade because you want to upgrade from the plastic for durability and strength if you happen to hit anything with it. Um, you know, the plastic bumpers are going to crack um, and break a little bit easier. So if you are going to be doing off-road driving, a little more trail riding, you do want to try to upgrade from the plastic bumpers and go ahead and move on to something that's going to have a little more strength. And then there are so many different bumpers available to choose from that they're also going to add protection to your Jeep as well. So as you can see um, with the runs in this bumper, this is again a moto built on my JKU. You can see that it's going to help to protect the front of this Jeep and the way that um, the line runs. It is also going to help to protect my radiator so that I have a lesser chance of getting sticks or limbs or anything that's going to actually puncture through the front of my Jeep. And it is the way this run is, it is also protecting the very top of my hood as well in my Jeep. So I want you to also notice the difference in the length of this aftermarket bumper versus the stock bumper. So as you can see, there's still stock fenders um, on this picture with this bumper and you can see how narrow this bumper is comparative to the stock bumper that was on it that was full width. Well, this gives my tire the ability to mount an obstacle such as a rock without interference of my bumper. So my bumper is not gonna be the first part that's going to make contact with the obstacle or the rock anymore. It is going to be 
my tire. So there's not going to be interference from um, any of my pieces uh, on my Jeep. So the bumper piece is not going to be full width where when I go to mount something, the bumper would hit before the tire. Now, where this is a more narrow um, bumper, you're going to see that when you go to mount an obstacle, the tire is going to make contact and be the first point of the Jeep to touch the obstacle. So I don't have to worry about, um, you know, as you pull up to the obstacle, sometimes if the bumper hits first and then that in, impairs so that the tire can't actually get to the obstacle like the rock to make contact, then you can get stuck or have a much harder time mounting. So as you can see, this is a more narrow bumper to allow uh, for the off-road uh, and trail riding capability of having the tire mount an obstacle first, which is going to just make drivability out on the trail a little bit easier. Um, and then I also want you to notice part of the reason I did a difference in length uh, for this aftermarket bumper versus a stock bumper is because in my design plan, um, I am running aftermarket fenders. So the lines of the fender and the bumper are going to follow just a little bit better. And I'm going to talk about that and show examples in just a minute. But that is a, another reason why I went with the design cut of this bumper in particular. So which bumper is right for you? As you can see, these are three different examples, but there are hundreds of different designs of aftermarket bumpers. Uh, you have steel and you have aluminum. Uh, you have absolutely custom fabricated like in the center picture on our CJ5. Um, and you can see like the JKU on the right has more of a stinger added on to the bumper. So again, that's going to help um, if you were to make contact with a tree or go through a wooded area where there's a lot of limbs that are hanging down is to try to help protect the Jeep itself. Um, and especially anything from puncturing in through the front of the Jeep uh, where you're going to get your radiator or anything that's going to be, you know, functionally important. So there are hundreds of different designs that you can choose from. And this is where taking the time to design your build first, know what direction you're going to go and then start to add your modifications and your upgrades and your pieces is going to be important. But again, this is also your personal preference as to what you like the look of uh, what you know, if you want steel, if you want aluminum, uh, if you want a full stinger, if you don't want a stinger, uh, this is all your personal preference. So there's no right or wrong answer on this. This is all going to be what you personally like the most. So um, as you can see, you're going to have to love the look and design of your bumper because it's going to be your build. Um, this has a little more zoomed in on our CJ5, so you can see. So this is a completely custom fabricated uh, bumper that we have in the front. Um, as you can see, there's a horseshoe there. We're horse people. Uh, but you can see again that this is a much narrower bumper, as is the one in the JKU and is the one on my JKU. Now, my JKU is not quite as narrow as this white JKU on the left, which I have to give a, a shout out to Lindsay Saddler. I don't know if you're on here, I haven't seen you on as much, but um, this is her white JKU over here on the left. Uh, so I'm using your Jeep as one of our examples tonight, Lindsay, uh, since you have the big stinger and a little bit different option. So just make sure that you plan ahead. So you design your build, you know your fender options, and if you're going to run a winch, before you start to decide on a bumper. Um, and my advice is if you're going to drive off road, you really want to think about a stubby bumper. And that is your more narrow bumper. They're called a stubby bumper. Just so you're going to have more options for mounting your obstacles without your bumper interference. And then you're also going to have less chance of damage during riding or recovery as um, plastic is not the ideal choice if you uh, are going to be an off-road situation where you're either going to have to get winched or be a recovery for somebody else. Um, those front bumpers, front and rear plastic bumpers, the stock ones, just they don't have that durability and strength that you see in the aluminum and the steel bumpers. So now it's time to talk about fenders. So 
Fenders go hand in hand with the bumper concept. And that's why we're talking about that tonight, because the design of the fender and the bumper, the way that the lines are and how they're going to look together, depending on the cut of the bumper and the cut of the fender, really go together. So really, when we're talking about fenders, it's the same idea as the bumper. If this is your focused daily driver, um, you're really not going to be driving off-road or trail riding. You're really going to be using your Jeep for your daily driver. Then again, you know, this upgrade is not something you have to make for functionality. This could be something if you want to make the upgrade for the look. But really, um, when we start talking about functionality, it's for driving it off-road and trail riding. So if you do want to be driving off-road more or you are you know, going trail riding, then this upgrade so that you're upgrading the plastic fenders is a really smart idea. Because again, it is going to give you more durability when you go to an aluminum or a steel fender. Because a lot of times you'll see... Um, you know, the fenders are going to crumple or tear or different things like that when you have the stock fenders. So as we're talking about upgrading, again, there are so many different types of fenders out there. This is where you're making your decisions for what you like the most. So this happens to be a full fender delete, and this is from Ace Engineering. So as you can see, there's no fender whatsoever left on this Jeep. So this is what they would consider a full fender delete. So you can kind of see the difference of the look. But also going with an upgraded fender, it's going to give you more travel room for your tire. So you're going to have more clearance with less lift uh, with an aftermarket fender as well. So uh, if you can see the difference here, like this is a fender delete. So this is going to be, you know, the absolute most clearance that you're going to get when we're talking about aftermarket fenders because there's not anything that is going to impede and interfere with the tire so that you don't have a fender that's, um, you know, hanging out and down lower so that as you go to um, like ride in obstacles, if you're going up on a rock or up on a tree or uneven terrain, when you start talking about flex, which, you know, is going to be the tire and the suspension working, when you start talking about fenders, Fenders help to also give you clearance for how much flex, so how far up the tire can go into um, the, I don't want to say the body, but how much flex and travel that tire can have before it hits fender or you start to rub or there's a clearance issue. So depending on what fenders you go with, that is also going to help and affect how much clearance you have when you're doing your build. So keep in mind your build overview as you're making a decision on fenders as well. So I wanted everything to match. I wanted everything to be in unison. And I had decided, you know, with a purple JKU that I was going to go ahead and do everything silver. So silver is my accent color. So what I decided is I wanted to go ahead and go with um, the Moto Built aluminum bumper and the Poison Spider aluminum fender so that I could stay with kind of that all silver look. Um, so that's part of why I went with the aluminum because I wanted that aluminum silver look um, on my build. And then I also wanted there to be some symmetry of the way that the line of the fender and the line of the bumper come together um, so that you can see on the side of this bumper the way that it is cut and how it starts to kind of angle in. So then that is matching also the angle in front part of this fender as well, where it starts to come to the front of the Jeep. So again, there are so many fender choices, just like bumper choices, and this is your build. So you need to go with what you love the look of. So, I mean, there's fender deletes, which is gonna be like this white JKU here where there's no fender. So you have nothing sticking out from the Jeep anywhere near to impede with your tire. There is armor that you can get um, to run armor as your fender. Then there's steel, which is normally black. And then there's custom, which this again is a full custom fender um, on this CJ5. And then there's the aluminum, which is right here. And everything can be painted. Uh, to be or powder coated, depending on if it's what direction you want to go uh, to have different color choices. But those are kind of the main 
four that you can start to be looking at and to think about. And then again, it's all about your choice. So enjoy the process of designing your build and deciding what you want to modify. So make sure that you take the time to sit down and build out this build process, which we still have four more classes left because uh, there's seven total in this build, uh, design your build training class. We're doing it live. And at the end of this, you will have your custom build sheet for your build for your Jeep so that then all these pieces are all going to fit together. These are two that take the time to look online, take the time. If you see a Jeep somewhere, you like the fender, you like the bumper, ask them what they're running, where they got it, who the maker is, um, and kind of start to get your wheels turning uh, and the process going of what you're looking for in your build and take your time to make sure that you absolutely love the look of what you're getting. So tonight was a quick class. Next week, our class is going to be Wednesday, December 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So next week is going to be our Design Your Build class four. Next week, we're going to be talking about rims or wheels, tires, and lifts because all of these go hand in hand together as you start talking about what wheels you're going to run that also affects what tires you're going to run what tires you're going to run are going to affect what lift you're going to get so these all go hand in hand and it's going to be a little bit longer class um because there's a little bit more to cover especially when we start talking about lifts but so next week will be wednesday december 5th 7 p.m eastern standard time i just wanted to remind you so nobody misses it and then I wanted to just do a really quick reminder of what we have going on at LadyJeepers.com right now. I know there's kind of a lot out there that uh, we kind of all threw out there all at once. So there's um, it can be a little overwhelming. But just a really quick review of kind of what we have upcoming and going on. We have the March training weekend and retreat, which is going to be March 2019, located out of Austin, Texas at the Zen Ranch that we are so excited about. So if you want more information on the registration link, um, this is set up in the event tab on this group page. You can um, jump over to that to get more information, find out all the particulars, the details. Um, I know Brandy has offered, she has been amazing to offer the Zen Ranch to us. If there's any questions, um, I can kind of shoot everybody her way. She's doing a great job of planning and putting all this together. So just a quick reminder, we have this is one of our upcoming um, big events. It's going to be amazing and so much fun and um, a chance for everybody to get together and do some hands on education and learning, get training together. Um, so, again, if you need any more information or have any more questions, uh, information is in the event tab. There's a link there, too, if you want to go ahead and get registered. Uh, because the early bird registration will be ending in January. So just kind of be planning ahead a little bit. Then the other thing that we still have going on is the 2019 planner. Um, it's our Jeep planner. It's also our build for us. Um, working through so much to start out 2019 together, really working on us, diving in, getting support, uh, the live training classes for this course are going to be starting December 29th. So that's going to be coming up here pretty quickly. Um, so I'm actually going to make this an event tab as well, because I know the information uh, for you ladies to get the discount on everything is uh, pinned to the top. But I'm going to go ahead and make it an event to uh, make it a little more clear for the different links. If you have not gotten yours yet and you want to be a part of this and be ready to start December 29th with us. As soon as we get done tonight, I will jump on there um, and set that up as an event so there's more information. The link is a little bit easier to find for you ladies. And then a quick reminder again, <laughs> next week cl week's class is going to be Wednesday, December 5th at 7 p.m. It's going to be Design Your Build, class number four, rims, tires, and lifts because they all go hand in hand. So, Thank you, ladies, for jumping on here with me this evening, um, jumping on here really quick. I know it was a much quicker class tonight, but, um, you know, just think about how important it is as you're thinking about fenders and you're thinking about bumpers to take that time to 
go ahead and set that build up so that you know what you're going to be doing with your Jeep, what your goals are. Uh, hopefully, you have been with us for this whole series and you have done, you downloaded your sheet and did your Jeep specs so you know where your Jeep is right now.